Good morning, Periscope. It is your girl, Nakia Young, entertainer, actress, recording artist, new mommy, all that good stuff. Hey, Anne. Let me turn the camera around so y'all can see me. Hey. I know I look crazy, but good morning. Good morning, 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 morning. Hi. How are you all doing? Yes, good morning. On this beautiful, super foggy. <laughs> it's really foggy in Chicago, y'all. I'm not sure what is going on outside. I am doing great. I am doing great. Um, I am adjusting to motherhood. It is awesome. It is awesome, 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 awesome. Um, for those of you guys who are new to my broadcast um, and don't know, I just had my first baby two weeks ago and he is beautiful. He's absolutely gorgeous and he is sleeping. Glory to God. Hello. All right. So I'm kind of waiting for other people to get on. I'm seeing some people joining. And I'll go ahead and introduce the topic as we're waiting. Excuse me. All right. So our topic is, can you stand to be blessed? Can you stand to be blessed? Right? Um, there were so many things I could have called this topic. But the main um, meat of what I want to say to you guys is this. Oftentimes, we pray for something or we're standing on faith. Or we're believing God for something. And then we get whatever that thing is, right? And we've all done this. So if you have, don't, no condemnation. But have you guys ever double tap your screen if you've been here? So you get the thing and you're all happy because you got the thing you were believing God for. And then you kind of slack off on doing what it took to get the thing, right? So say you were fasting and you were praying or you had some scriptures you were confessing and standing on and um, yes, right? And so now you've got the thing and you're just like, glory to God, I got it. Praise the Lord, right? And you just kind of relax like, okay, you know, I got it. I got it. I, I got it. Right? And then you like, why you caught off guard all happy about the thing? All hell breaks loose. Just all hell breaks loose out of nowhere. Right? And yes, you wasn't ready for it because you just wasn't even on your guard. You don't put your shield down. You wasn't on your post. Nothing. And all of a sudden, just adversaries just break out. Right? So, um, that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about can you stand to be blessed because, um, thank you for the hearts. Keep them coming, by the way. This is the kind of stuff that you have to deal with is um, when you get the thing that you're believing God for, when you get the big blessing, that is not the time to get off your post. That is the time to continue doing the praying, doing the, the fasting, doing the reading the word, doing whatever it took to get the thing. That's the time to keep doing those things, right? No days off. Yes, not realizing what it took to get to the next level is required in the next... Exactly. Yes, my sister. Yes. Okay. All right. And so our key scripture, I'm going to try to see if I can um, pull it up. I'm just going to read it to you because the words are going to be too small for you guys to read this. But it is in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9, and it says... Um, Paul is talking and he's kind of doing his traveling and um, he says in verse 9, a great door for effective work, a great door for effective work has been opened to me or has opened to me and there are many who oppose me. There are many who oppose me. Another translation says a great door and effectual door is open unto me, but there are many adversaries. Okay, it doesn't say that you're supposed to be scared of the adversar adversaries. It just says that they are there and there are many of them. So don't get so excited about the opportunity and about this great effectual door that is open that you just skip to Malou and you don't realize you're about to get your butt kicked because you ain't got your armor on. Right. <laughs> so that is what we are talking about on today. Um, 
let us turn to Ephesians. Y'all already know where I'm about to go. Y'all already know. Y'all already know. But Ephesians. And we're going to look at that chapter 6. I'm reading from the NIV version right now. Um, just in case some of you guys were wondering, like, where is she reading from? Yes, get ready to put in the work with faith, with the faith. Yes. Because, I mean, it's just like every cartoon we grew up watching as kids, you know? It's like, um, I don't know, Thundercats, He-Man, pick one. It wasn't, it was like always another battle, you know? They would all band together and, and put their powers together and fight the enemy and then they'd have the happy ending like yay we did it right and then you pan the screen at the end while they all over there celebrating then the enemy is just like i'll get you next time in their little demon voice whatever but yeah <laughs> it's just like that in real life it's just like that like satan is not somewhere just like dang they happy i lost no he is gearing up for next time <laughs> Okay, he's gearing up for next time. Trust me. He has nothing else to do but pe but be petty. Like being petty is Satan's full-time job. He is the pettiest of petty. He is the father of all things petty. He has nothing to do with his life. His end has already been determined. He knows he's going to just burn in a lake of fire forever and ever and ever when all is said and done. And his petty goal is to take as many of God's people down with him as humanly possible. He is never not trying to steal, kill, and destroy. Never. Satan is never taking no breaks, okay? No days off. So, we can't either. I'm just saying. Um, yeah. He's the ultimate hater. The ultimate. His petty knows no bounds. His petty is petty. Like, I just, I can't. But, we already have the victory. That's the good news. We already have the victory. Let me find this scripture. So we're going to scroll on down to verse 10. And I'm going to read all the way through to verse 20. Okay? So everybody's like, yeah, this is Sunday school scripture. We know this already. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Right? Okay. So here we go. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God. Verse 11. So that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Now, skirt, let's pause. Um, these many adversaries that we were talking about in 1 Corinthians 16 and 9. Um... Sometimes these adversaries look very familiar. Sometimes they look like family members. Sometimes they look like friends. Like, most of the time they look like family members and friends. <laughs> most of the time our adversaries are not people we don't know. They're people we know, right? Um, and the devil uses them because he knows that that's going to hurt us the most, right? He'll use some random every now and again, but most of the time it's people we know. Um... So that verse, girl, look, <laughs> yes, I'm loving the hearts, you guys. Keep them coming and share this with your followers, yes, because um, somebody needs to hear this message and be encouraged. So, but it says our struggle is not against flesh and blood. That is very key to note, very key to note, because um, we got to pray for these people. We got to pray for these people because they are under the influence of what? Rulers, authorities, powers of the dark world, right? Hey, Juanita, what's up, hun? Um, so this is not even them acting like this. I mean, it's them, but it's not them, okay? It's the spirit that is operating in them, okay? So, verse 13, therefore put on the full armor of God. Hey, Mildred, good morning. Welcome, ladies. Put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then, verse 14, hey, 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 with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Now, the belt of truth buckled around your waist and the breastplate, I can't, 
can talk. Breastplate of righteousness in place. Um, so, all right. The Bible being the belt of truth, the word of God is the ultimate truth. It does not even need defending. It doesn't. You just open it and you just read it. It's right there in black and white. The Bible needs no defending. You open it, you read it. If people got a problem with it, take it up with the author. They don't take it up with you. They take it up with the person who wrote it, right? So, um, that's a good weapon to have. I always come back with the word. You can't really argue with it. I mean, you can, but you arguing with God at that point. You're not arguing with me. Because I'm just living by what the word says. I'm just doing what the word says. Sorry, not sorry. So, um, verse 15, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Yes. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, right? So the word of God can be used as a sword in the spirit, a belt of truth, right? Um, verse 18 says, and pray in the spirit on all occasions. That's a good thing to start doing, right? Just pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit on the toilet. Pray in the spirit in the shower. Pray in the spirit when you're eating your oatmeal in the morning. Pray in the spirit in the car. Please pray in the spirit in the car because people cannot drive. Y'all know people cannot drive in Chicago. That's a good place. Everywhere is a good place. In the car especially. Um, yes. So it says, pray in the spirit on all occasions. Verse 18. We're in Ephesians chapter 6. With all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert. And always keep on praying for all God's people. All the Lord's people. Pray also for me. So Paul's like, pray for me too. Okay? And that's key. Because Paul is the messenger and a lot of times we, you know, forget to, yes, be alert. Yes. We forget to pray for God's messengers, God's pastors, apostles, teachers, um, God's artists. Like, you know, we did a whole 30 days of prayer for the entertainment industry. And we weren't just praying for Christians in the entertainment industry. Um, but definitely th we had a couple of days where we interceded for them. We held them to this high standard and then we see them fall publicly and it's like embarrassing. Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that they did that. Oh my gosh, I can't believe Israel Houghton cheated on his wife. Like what? Like these are people we have to pray for them, right? Because I mean, of course, Satan is going to turn up the level of temptation and attacks on them because he's mad. He's mad at what they're doing. Yes. Right. So I love that Paul said, pray also for me. He's not holding himself up to some standard that he don't need prayer. Right. He said, pray also for me that whenever I speak, Words may be given to me that's, so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Man, you the adversaries that Paul had, you don't want them adversaries. But Paul was about that life. He persevered. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Okay? Um, so, yeah. Anybody got any comments? For those of you guys who just hopped on, we're talking about can you stand to be blessed. And we're talking about how... When, and jo those of you who are on the replay, thank you for the replay. Thank you for tuning in. Um, in the replay, you can't comment, but you can still double tap that screen and share hearts, right? Um, so yeah, we're talking about the same thing, the same faith, whatever it took for you to get the things that you're praying for. You know, you can't slack up on that once you got what you wanted. Um, and a lot of times we do that. We get relaxed and we just kind of... I got it, right? And then we put our armor down and then the devil just come out of nowhere because he petty and attack, right? Um, our key scripture was, uh, is 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9. And Paul is talking and he says, a great door for effective work is open unto me, but there are many adversaries, right? 
And we're not to fear the adversaries. We already know we have the victory. We already know this. Satan already knows this. But he has no life. He is petty. He is the father of all things petty. And he has nothing better to do with his time than to look for ways to bring us down. And that is why we cannot slack on our praying, on our fasting, on our reading the word, on our having our full armor on at all times. So... Um, just to kind of put it into perspective, y'all know I've been just giddy about this baby for months, right? And so me and my husband, we have the baby. The baby is born Thursday at like 2.48 a.m., right? Yes, ma'am. No time to slack. So the baby is born like almost 3 o'clock in the morning on Thursday. The very next day, um, you know, we get a big victory financially, right? A big opportunity opens up for my husband. Yay, right? The day after that, Saturday, we're released from the hospital, like later Saturday evening. Saturday evening, between Saturday evening and Sunday afternoon, all kind of adversaries pop out. Just all kind of adversaries. I won't even go into what, but I will say this. Um, it was a lesson learned, you know? And it's just like, okay. You know, you have a baby, especially you give birth to your firstborn male child that's going to carry on the name, right? Um, that is not going to be no punk with the parents that this baby got. Y'all already know, right? So the devil is just like, ah, right? Just shaking in his boots. So he's trying to figure out some kind of way to kick up dust, you know? And it could just be just anything you know getting people to confess bad things about you getting people to do things that'll get you out of your love walk and i've scoped about that before it's a whole other scope but whenever people are seriously trying it with you please know that there is a huge yes distractions unnecessary distractions um know that there's a huge blessing on the other side of that a huge blessing if you just Hold on to God's unchanging hand and don't slap him. There is a huge blessing <laughs> on the other side of that, right? If you pray for them instead of cuss them out, there is a huge blessing on the other side of that. Yes, if you stay focused on what God has you focused on, right? Don't get moved by the distractions. Um, remember what we just read. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood. Yes, flesh and blood people are being used, but they're not our enemy, right? You need to get up and you need to speak to and bind the spirit that is operating in them, right? Not go at them. Pray for them. That confuses the enemy. That when somebody is trying you to the uttermost and you pray for them instead, he, yes, he's just like, great. That's not what I expected them to do. <laughs> I was trying to get my strife on and they just totally squelched that, right? So um, that's all I really wanted to say to you guys again. Can you stand to be blessed? Can you stand to be blessed? Because yes, using prayer and praise, when you get your blessings and you get attacked out of nowhere and the higher levels you go, the greater the attacks are going to be right so make sure that your prayer and praise life praying in the spirit whatever have you welcome is up to par with the level you are trying to get to right whatever you took whatever prayer and praise it took to get there it's going to take that and beyond to get to the next level and the level after that and the level after that thank you thank you so much for tuning in and for your very insightful comments you guys are the bomb so it is about time for me to go wake up this baby in here so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna get off but i want you guys to share this with your followers because somebody needs this reminder this morning and before i jump off here um my girl tiffany jordan she posted something i was posting a reminder for people to come tune in to scope and i had to yes i will i had to um get on facebook and post it and she posted this which goes with our topic today so that's why i'm sharing it she says, the warfare is about where you are going, not where you are. If it could kill you, you would already be dead. 
Get your joy and peace back. Get your focus back and know that delay is not denial. God is setting you up. Rejoice in advance because your destiny is already written and sealed. God will be glorified through your testimony. So I just wanted to leave you guys with that. Speaking of testimony, um, last week on Hump Day Help, my husband and I shared our story about supernatural childbirth. And people were really blessed by that scope. Um, we were able to download it and put the four-part testimony on YouTube. So if you guys go to YouTube, um, my YouTube page is youtube.com slash Nikia Young, N-I-K-E-Y-A. Um, and then it's called Our Supernatural Childbirth Story. Okay? So Our Supernatural Childbirth Story, it's in four parts. It's on YouTube. Um, trying to find... Well, I can't show it to you, but... I'll turn the camera around for a brief second. Yeah, so that is where you find it. Just so y'all can see, because I don't look like this on my little picture. Y'all see, I originally have short hair, have a little pixie cut happening. That's what my hair looked like before I got pregnant and quit relaxing it and got all these braids and stuff. So, if y'all see that picture, that's still me, you on the right page. <laughs> And go to our Supernatural Childbirth Story. It's in four parts. Feel free to share it with anyone you know who is pregnant. Um, yeah. And tell them to get the book, Supernatural Childbirth by Jackie Mize. That is all. I love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in. Team Natural. <laughs> Look, I'm not going to cheer too hard because I don't know how long I'm going to be on this team. I do love the convenience of um, crochets and stuff. But I don't know how long I'm going to be on this team because I miss my pixie cuts. I miss my little relaxed short pixie cuts so we gonna see anywho y'all have a blessed week a happy hump day i love you guys and i will see you next week bye